Hey y'all, what's up? This is your girl Gibson is 92, giving you guys the latest and exclusive content on your music, entertainment news, and inspiration quotes by yours truly, the Queen's Fat Period. All right, guys, I'm going to discuss about colorism in the toxic black community. And I have recently came to terms with myself having experience with colorism. And you know what, since the topic of discussion is very important, I highly recommend you guys can have your honest thoughts and opinions. You guys can have the red carpet because I am being beyond sick of the BS period. So um, colorism, unfortunately I have experienced it. And now I am a brown skinned black woman of color Um, and even like in the music, the entertainment, you know, within the family. Colorism is not just colorism, but narcissism goes hand in hand. And I will say this, I feel like as time goes on, people have been very, very vocal about the negative stereotypes, the, you know, disrespect, the crude remarks that people make about people's skin tone. Now, colorism is a form of discrimination of someone's skin tone, regardless of who they are, and can be within the community and outside of the community. And I feel at this point, things need to go back to the drawing board. And in the toxic black community, and it's what's really infuriating to me at times, because I look back, I said, wow, this situation was a form of colorism. This situation was a form of abuse. And your girl has been through some things in her personal life. And I will be transparent. I will be stripping different layers and different aspects of who I am. I have been called a burden. Um, I have been told I'm not successful. I have been told I've been compared to people all the time, 24-7. And as a child, I was very hurt and distraught by that because I, at the time, I was like, wow. You know, I'm doing everything I'm supposed to do, or is it me, or is it my fault? You know, but as I go back, I said, yeah, <laughs> your girl been through colorism too. It did play a role in my life. That's why we're here now. We're going to have this discussion. So I feel that like even as time goes on, things are going to change dramatically. And I feel that at this point, we just need a new, you know, nostalgia. And so far I have been listening to my inner chakras, my inner well-being, my inner, you know, like I said, you know, different walks of just that inner, you know, strength that I have. And definitely I have no zero whatsoever. I might don't. And um, since, you know, even in the music, and I'll tell you this, especially for dark skinned black women of color, you know, they have been like, unfortunately throughout the years when it comes to their skin tone or people making them feel that, you know, they're not beautiful, they're not desirable. Um, and in general, like people have this God-like complex that they feel that they are at the top of the totem pole. And then people feel like the rest of people at the bottom of the totem pole. I have personally have witnessed in my life, people have made me feel like a pile of S-H-I-T. And they also feel that even with me, I've, I've even started to really look into certain situations and personal experiences that I have went through. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, that was a color was that was a colorism situation. It played into the narcissism and it also played to the colorism situation, uh, colorism as well. Um, and especially like, you know, like people breaking barriers and different avenues um, and people actually breaking the negative stereotypes. Your talent to will speak for itself. Like why should your skin tone be a discrimination if you have talent and work ethic and creativity? And also, I will discuss about this because in the music world, a good example, Brandy, she's one of my favorite artists, period, um, coming from Mississippi. Brandy is pretty much the vocal Bible 
She is pretty much one of the greatest artists of all time of her generation. Brandy has sold over what, 40 million records? Um, you know, stars, um, you know, Brandy fans, um, her timeless music, you know, um, we got like what, um, Cinderella, um, I Know What You Did Last Summer, Dolpo Platinum, Moesha, Broadway Chicago, The Game, um, who, uh, Temptations, Confessions of a Marriage Counselor, um, you know, Brandy pretty much is, oh, the cover girl. Um, I can run down the list because Brandy is one of those black women of color that she has pushed beyond her expectations. Brandy also, with her beautiful, her gorgeous, you know, sex appeal, her music, her aesthetic, everything about Brandy um, is a good example of, you know, just because you know, wherever you come from and you are who you are, you can make it big and use it. So Brandy definitely is pretty much like, you know, one of like the gifted, you know, well-rounded female black musicians because Brandy, with her sound and her artistry, there's like no other. And she is definitely like, you know, everything period. Also, that was like like I said, that's a good example, great example of how, and even she has experienced colorism in the entertainment and in the music industry. And she has even said from herself, she has people told her she wasn't going to do anything. But guess what? You know what they always say, right? You know, when people play stupid games, they win what? Exactly. Period. Exactly. Period. Also, um, I think about. Um, Naomi Campbell. Naomi Campbell is a um, well-known, successful model, entrepreneur, um, and she is also a um, humanitarian. Naomi Campbell is another gorgeous, beautiful, dark-skinned woman of color that she is pretty much the epitome of what it is to break barriers um, in the entertainment world, in the fashion world especially in the beauty world. Naomi Campbell has always been very, very mystiqueness, um, sexy, you know, um, her confidence. She's mixed, she's she's a, a black woman. She's Afro mixed with Chinese, um, but still, you know, she considers herself as a black woman and she is rightfully so. Um, and she definitely, you know, really, you know, made sure that she was going to actually, you know, do everything and it's a representation of who she is and especially like watching you know her like through on the catwalks and and like on the runways and the fashion shows and all of that i feel like naomi campbell she's also vocal about things and you know how people always say when you're vocal about things like oh you're the bad guy but no um she's also like i said one of the you know women that paved the way and opened the doors for black women models in general to like live their dreams and their beauty. You know, black women are the standard of beauty um, because black women have always been a standard of beauty for years. It's just that, you know, there are certain things, especially with colorism does play a role in that. Yes, colorism does play a role in that because there's times where, mm, you know, I'll talk about it in my videos later on. I feel like I definitely have seen and even witnessed things, you know, from people. And I think that Naomi Campbell definitely took something and ran with it. And I grew up with, you know, like that nostalgia of like just beauty, grace, and creativity. Naomi Campbell is another one. And I know, and to be honest, Naomi Campbell, pretty much she's another representation of women of color, um, dark-skinned women of color. Your skin color is beautiful just the way it is. So, yeah, she broke a lot of barriers. She has done a lot, period, in general. Um, and, you know, sometimes I kind of feel like, even for me, um, listening to, like, people's stories about how people say, yeah, you know, um, people would have made, you know, mean remarks about my skin tone. 
um, and people have made me feel like I wasn't worthy or well, how about hold up wait a minute or how about making nasty remarks skin tone remarks of my color or my skin tone um, and making me feel that I am not good enough worthy enough and I have to be honest some people they are aware about certain things when it comes to colorism I mean it's just a different there are just so many different layers to this colorism thing but I feel that listening to people saying that well it's not just you know you know how people that try to make it seem like it's just well it's your skin tone that's just inferior no it's your light it's your aura it's the quality that you have and definitely when it comes down to the stereotypes i have witnessed you know even people even they've made cruel remarks of other people and they said nasty things in references of putting you know people down because of their skin color then talking about their features or comparing their features to different whatever and i'm like as i go back i unfortunately i've been around people that have said mean nasty things and i go back i'm like Yeah, that was colorism. That was a form of colorism. And also how people, they will make sly remarks. And they are aware about the sly remarks, what they have said about people. The first time I had learned about that, saying nasty, mean, cruel remarks, you said what you said the first time. That's it, period. period. And some people, they are aware about how the colorism and their you know family or friends or acquaintances in their circle um and sometimes and it happens sometimes we may not know that we have been around people that like are either ignorant or colorist or in between or whatever um even watching like shows um man i tell you what like the Proud Family, for example. I love The Proud Family. I grew up with the show. Now, recently, The Proud Family has got a reboot. I personally have loved all the characters. Penny, Zoe, Dijanae, Sticky, Trudy, Oscar, Sugar Mama, Puff, BBCC, Bobby, except for La Cienega. I'm going to talk about that later on down in the video because I'm like, her character is iffy to me. Is she then in the way how they made her character portray as she's really mean and rotten? But this is a different story. The new and Michael, Michael, he's also the you know an amazing character on the show. The new reboot. There's a new character, um, Maya. She's amazing, um, but at the same time though. There's some issues with her character. And I love seeing people different perspectives, like different opinions about the new series and new reboots. Because most millennials, we grew up watching The Proud Family on Disney. I mean, we grew up watching the characters and the adventures and different topics. Even the original series, like, I definitely have saw how they touched things on, like, um, you know, racism and discrimination. And all of that came into play. And I was like, cool. But this new reboot is getting on my last nerve. I haven't seen the reboot. Now, I have seen a few clips here and there. But I have to watch an episode, a couple episodes on season one. So that way, I can actually get a little bit and dive deep into, um, like, this, the new, the Proud Family, Louder and Prouder reboot. So I love the animation because I'm an artist. I I do art so i definitely would like really one day i'll get into like watching a few episodes and then you know just see and take it all in but we just gonna need some new nostalgia and we're gonna have to change and we're gonna have to change stereotypes and we're gonna have to have to see especially innovation and new creativity because i really feel like the new series, the original series was amazing. But there were some things that stereotypes, it got repetitive. Dijanae, I've always loved Dijanae, her character. 
Dijanae's character, and especially in the co- like in that colorism, you know, aspect. Like Dijanae is like beautiful. She's loud. She's funny. She's a sense of humor. She's like the life of people. But Dijanae's character has been like pretty much a negative stereotypical of dark skinned black women and young girls. Because she's always like always chasing after Sticky. And Sticky's like, no, like doing too much over the top. Or she's like one of the okay, like she's a bad friend. I don't, I mean, some day, some way she's a bad friend, but like people try and make her like, oh my god, she's terrible, terrible when she's not. But I feel like Dijanae, that episode with the poetry slam, of course, that was one of my favorite episodes. That's when she really, like I said, they, like the producers on the show, they really shed a different aspect of Dijanae's character where Dijanae is like more uh, creativity, her poetry. You know, Dijanae can be into singing, writing songs, you know, dancing, singing and dancing. And I feel like that right there, she should have kept doing the poetry thing throughout the whole series, okay? Because I kind of feel like Dijanae's aesthetic, and especially with that bubbly personality that she has, she brings the show, okay? The reboot. (laughs) It got worse with the reboot because the the way how the reboot is 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 just too much she's just worse (laughs) her character doesn't even have any versatility and i feel like people they just didn't they dropped the ball with the whole proud family reboot series they really did okay then um maya her character she is a beautiful, gifted, young, dark-skinned black woman, young girl of color. She is intelligent. She's bubbly. We don't really see that bubbly part. We always see the serious, serious, serious side. I mean, I've seen how even with her pose, and I'm like, like this. Like, yeah, she's woke while well, she's solitude and black heritage, which is fine. But I felt like, why she couldn't just have like a bubbly face without this sign? Without this, no. She should have been smiling. You know, she likes something like this pose or like something like, you know, like this, you know, like bring her femininity stuff like that. See? But yet she's another character that dropped the ball with the, you know, Proud Family series. So I'm like... The Prime Fan Reboot series just went all the way down in hell. So <laughs> we're just going to have to do something different. We're just going to have to really, really, really tap into stuff. And even in the toxic black community, um, even with like abuse, that also uh, goes within colorism as well. Oh, man. You know what? <laughs> this is what I'm going to do. Your girl is going to actually, actually say this. I'm going to speak to the universe, okay? I'm going to speak into existence. That's what I do. I'm going to speak into existence because I'm telling y'all, girl might do something one day. Girl might do something really, 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 really impeccable one day. And um, I feel that this is going to be really cool. Um, So, yeah. I, um, I just... I just don't really, I hate to say this, but yeah, I, I've been beyond tired of the colorism in the black community. And this goes on from slavery to Jim Crow, all of the above, everything. So I feel that at this point, we're just going to have to really, 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 really you know, dive deep into different topics on my channel. I am, like I said, I am naturally reserved. I am shy. But I want you guys to see a different side of Gibson's Night 2 and different sides of me. And I do have a, like, you know, even talking about colorism, and even talking about it, and it's like for me as a black woman and a brown skinned black woman of color, um, I I really 
it's just so exhausting and sad to see how people they just nowadays just mean and cruel to people i mean even with that whole thing about you know colorism and I'm being sick and tired of the uh, toxic trash into the black community. And even, let me talk about the music. I even think the music's also another thing, too, and it got worse over the years. What I mean by that is, like, even the music. Now, I'm not saying, like, even the music, like, the, the song's good, the beat is good, the production's on fire, but there have been music that have sold, and especially with references to dark-skinned black women of color that are stereotypical, really mean, crude, nasty references references towards, you know, black women of color um, of, you know, dark skin. Man, I'm like, and sometimes we the little, so the song doesn't mean we're bad, we the song, but as you look back at the daggone lyrics, you're like, Oh my God, period. Oh my God. Oh my goodness. Like, seriously, for real, for real, for real. So, um, this is pretty much like the reason why, um, and especially in everything that goes within, like, you know, colorism and music and entertainment and fashion. It ties it all together. And I felt like it was time for your girl to actually speak on her personal opinions about colorism. Um, and unfortunately, I have gotten into a new spiritual awakening. And I started to say, tag on sis, honey bun, it's not your fault. You've seen it, you know, and you've witnessed stuff. And I want my black sisters, dark skin black sisters of color, um, you know, to even speak and share their stories um, with their experiences with colorism and discrimination. Um, and like I said, even though I am a brown skinned black woman of color, I went through abuse. I know how that is. Um, and yeah, so to really understand certain things and bring them together, it's very important for us to really have a conversation. There should be more positive, you know, open platforms that people can discuss whether we agree or disagree. And sometimes it's really pretty much how people had their minds, how it was programmed to think a certain way or feel a certain way or feel like, you know, they're pretty much, but no, a-holes and their families, a-holes friends, you know, acquaintances, a-holes, it doesn't matter. Um, so with that being said, you know, people, um, yeah, we're just going to have to say this. For me, I'm starting to really get really more open-minded and I'm starting to get very transparent. But at the same time, you know, I'm starting to get more blunt about things. So, um yeah, I, I just want people, you know, what are your thoughts, you know, about colorism in the black community? How do you guys feel about it? Let's have a conversation below. You guys can have the red carpet. I want you guys to express yourself. Let me know down below. Have you guys experienced colorism? And let me know down below in the comment section. And as always, stay tuned. Your girl is starting to kick a new wave series of videos. Because, like I said, it's about time, okay? So, I want you guys to know. Yeah, so, with that being said, stay tuned the next episode. Again, this is 92. Like, share, comment, subscribe down below. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that notification button. And as always, stay tuned on the next episode of Get Since 92, Dragon Ball Z Narrative Reference. Peace, bye-bye. Your girls as an out. The Super Saiyan's out.